MX TV is proudly brought to you by Peter Stevens Motorcycles, QBE Insurance, Motorcycle Insurance Specialists, Fox, and Honda, the power of dreams. I'm Brendan Bell and welcome to this week's MX TV and of course joining me is former Australian Supercross and Motocross star Lee Hogan. Lee, welcome buddy. Thanks mate, it's great to be back for another big week of MX TV. We're going to have a huge week this week. We head out to the bush for a couple of trail riding events. We go back 30 years to look at MX in the 70s and check out the hype behind the latest and greatest racing event to hit Australia, Super X. Plus the fro puts the RMZ 250 through its paces. I can't wait, Lee. That's right, mate, it's going to be huge. But first up, let's check out the Blue Light Ride. It's an event that's organised each year by the Victorian Police Motorsports Club in Noogie, Victoria. Now, last year was no exception, and we were there also to check out all of the action. Well, Lee, this year's Blue Light Ride is actually on this weekend, and if you want to know more about it, all you got to do is go to bluelightride.com.au. Oh, it's a great event, Belly. Yes. The one bike that you won't find there is a motocross bike. And it's time to go check out another one of the brand new models in this week's bike review. In this week's MX TV bike review, we take a look at the 2009 RMZ 250 from Suzuki. The brand new RMZ250 isn't as heavily redesigned as previous years, but the changes that have been done are certainly significant. First up, this year's Z250 has the same basic engine characteristics, but with a little hint of oomph where it counts. The 249cc mil still puts out plenty of power, and the majority of it is still in the mid-range and upper RPM. Finding a higher gear in the 5-speed tranny is easy as and the judder springs and a redesigned shift lever and clutch cable bracket provide enhancements to another of the Suzuki's strong points. If you've got a busy left foot and typically find yourself on the rev limiter, the Suzuki is a great fit as it likes to shift. Not only is working the clutch lever extremely easy, but it's also less cluttered on that side of the oversized Renthal handlebars due to the hot start being moved to a thumb-operated position on the throttle side. 
The other big highlight of the Z250 is the chassis. Both suspension components have received updates and both the front and rear shower components continue to offer one of the plushest rides available on a stock quarter litre. It also has a thick new look as the radiator cover and number plate graphics are brand new for 2009. The addition of a new gripper seat with projected cross shape patterns on the top surface also provide additional grip for the rider. So overall, although Suzuki haven't rewritten the book on the 2009 250RMZ, they definitely have made enough real changes to easily notice the improvements and the quality we've come to expect from the boys on yellow. The 2009 RMZ 250 is available in Australia now and will retail for around $9,990. For a competitive quote on your insurance, call QBE Insurance, the motorcycle insurance specialists on 1800 24 34 64. Now, let's check out what our test riders thought. First up, let me tell you, when we got this bike from Suzuki, it was brand spanking new, straight out of the box. So we had to run it in, and we also had to break the suspension in. Now, I don't know whether we've broken the suspension in completely, but it certainly softened up during the day. When I first got the bike, my impressions were there were some pretty trick bits on the bike and some bits that uh, Suzuki have really thought about, like uh, the fly clutch, the hot start on the right side, and there's some little trick bits, like a gold chain. When I first jumped on it and rode it and started it, the major thing that I noticed was uh, 94 decibels. The exhaust system on this is unbelievable. It's so quiet, it's almost like an enduro bike. One thing about this bike is it's got a lot of pull from the mid-range and then it tapers out quite quickly. Um, it might be that you just change a couple of sprockets and that'll fix it. The front end to me felt a little bit fat and uh, a little bit heavy. It felt very stable on the ground and it felt very stable as I was riding it. It probably doesn't turn as good as some of the other bikes I've ridden. Gee, for somebody of my standard, it's a nice, easy bike to ride. Real easy, mellow power, great mid-range and not a real lot of over rev, so it's not gonna, you know, throw you all over the place. Today, the, the windy, dusty conditions were, were quite a handful. The wind made it very difficult to jump. The dusty conditions made it hard to track and turn corners and, and have fun. It made have to really concentrate to get around the track today. Look, it took a few laps. Being predominantly a 450 rider, it took quite a few laps for me to get used to the, the RMZ 250. The power comes on fairly slowly. It's very, very restricted in its, in its engine output with the muffler. But after a little while, you do get used to it, and it's a lot more comfortable to ride. I really found the, the RMZ 250 to struggle top end. It, it, the gear ratio is so close together, which does make for a fairly good acceleration but in the long tracks, it's, I think it's gonna struggle. Yeah, I found it hard to, uh, on the last half of a, of a big sweeping corner, um, coming you know, out of it as fast as you possibly could go, uh, I found it very hard to steer the front end to get into where I wanted to go. You could do it, but it meant taking some risks that I really don't wanna take. I did feel that the suspension could probably do with some serious revalving on the front end. The back end was quite good, but the front end didn't quite sit there where we wanted it to go. Uh, look, it's a great little package. It's a great bike, but I, I think it really suits a, a beginner to an intermediate rider rather than a pro. You gotta work fairly hard at, to, to get it around the track at a reasonable pace. Um, and a lot of guys don't really wanna work. They just wanna hop on it and go for a ride. It's time to let that pro go. Suzuki sneaking in just under the Honda CRF 450R there with a 2 minute 30. Who knows, with the right conditions it could have been even quicker. Okay, let's see how it goes on the Fro Quarter Mile.
Well, an 8.45 there into a pretty stiff headwind. But the real question is, what was he thinking looking off the track like that? You'd think he might be a bit quicker if he watched where he was going. Then again, who knows with the pro. RMZ 450. Ride the revolution. How much fun can you have on a Honda? This much fun. Ride out on your new Honda Fun Bike and set up camp with a free fun pack. Plus, there's a bonus $400 cashback on the CRF50 and no application fee on Honda Finance. Hurry, because when they're gone, they're gone. MX TV is proudly supported by. GT Bicycles, Dunlop, Alpine Stars, Pro Circuit, Motul, Scott Goggles, and Suzuki. Welcome back to MXTV. Well, 30 years ago, the motocross scene was completely different. The Broadford motocross track had just opened and they were hosting a round of the Australian Motocross Championships. Now, we've been lucky enough to get some archive footage of the event so we thought we'd share it with you. But most importantly, check out the style of some of the pioneers and the legends of this sport. Well, thanks to Roger Harvey there for shooting that footage. Lee, how much has this sport changed in 30 years, mate? Oh, it's unbelievable watching those guys. I tell you what, you wouldn't get away with that nowadays. <laughs> yeah. The thing I think personally, the forks on today's modern bikes allow you to be so much more aggressive over the front of the bike. Yeah. But like you said, how much has the sport changed over the years? It's unbelievable. Well, it certainly has, mate. And something that's new that's hit the Australian sport is of course something Lee knows all about. It's the Super X Series. And we were recently down there to find out more about it.
I think it's, it's really good. They've run a series, uh, had this as a third round now, and they, you know, worked on a few things, and it's coming along real well. And um, you know, from an outside point of view, I think it's awesome. You know, we've got a lot more trucks here now, and um, you've got Reedy and uh, all the other guys here, and it just makes it a good atmosphere. Well, some of these formats need to be thrown out the window. Um, some of these, well, last week we had above that final, was a bit of a joke. That's not really for championship. That should be a little bit of a sideshow to the, the main races, I think. But um, that's what I do do different, for sure. Hey, hopefully it's going to turn, you know, our local Aussie riders into superstars, just like what Chad Reed is now. You know, uh, you know, they're household names in the US, so hopefully in two or three years' time, you know, Shane Boyd, Matt Moss, Jay Marmot, uh, you know, they're all going to be household names. They're going to be on the back of our cereal boxes, hopefully. Of course, Lee, you're a big part of the Super X coverage, mate, but there's been a few mixed reactions with some of the riders about the formats that they're running. And, of course, we know the formats are there because we want to make it a lot more interesting and a lot more exciting, but do you think they've got the balance right? Well, I think they do, to tell the truth. I have to put a couple of different caps on at the moment. Of course. First of all, as, a, as an ex-rider, having raced Supercross just about my whole life, yep. I'm, I'm a big fan when the time's right for the 20-lap final. It's a completely different type of training we have to do. Uh, at the moment, with Chad Reed in Australia and live television for the first time, we need these short, sharp little formats. Yeah. And... Uh, I'm hope, I have to be honest, I'm hoping one day, if we get the likes of James Stewart, some of the top yeah. riders over, racing with Chad in Australia, it'll be great, it'll be exciting, and maybe one day we can go back to 20 lap finals, but at the moment, it's not going to happen. Yeah, that's right, but it, it's the most exciting thing that's happened to this sport in quite a while, mate, and you're doing a great job down there, so uh, keep it up, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> now, another guy that's doing a great job is Chad Talbot, so let's have a look at this week's mechanical tip. This is Chad. Chad's a mechanic. And this is Chad's mechanical tip. Changing brake pads. If you ask most blokes about changing brake pads, they'll tell you it's a real pain in the ass. But today, we're going to show you an easy way of inspecting and changing the pads on both your front and back wheels quickly. And most importantly, without the trouble of having to remove your axles, chains and wheels first. First up, let's tackle the back brakes. Here's what you do. And this is the part that will turn a 40 minute job into a two minute one. Just grab the back brake caliper and press the piston back to make sure you have plenty of free play. Then wind out the eight mil bolt but make sure you can support your case while you're pulling the pin out. This is very important. Now just remove the pads to inspect, and if required, replace. Before you replace them, make sure the housings in the back here is nice and clean, with no dirt or anything in there that may cause a problem down the track. Remember, any idiot can go fast, but without good brakes, you won't be doing it long. So make sure you use quality parts too. Make sure the actual caliper is moving free on the pins and you're pretty much done. Time to reinstall the new brake pads. To replace, push your caliper across and put the first pad in. Make sure it clips into the end lug. Then second one, clip it in. Push the two brake pads up and ensure they both are pushing against the anti-rattle bracket. Wind the retaining bolt back in. Remember, just nip it up, it doesn't need to be mega tight. And then pump the rear brake up. Back brake, done. Time to tackle the front brake now. And it's pretty much what we did to the back. But this time we have to remove the discard first. That's just these two screws. Again as before, push the caliper across to make sure you have plenty of free play by pushing the pistons into the actual caliper so the caliper is floating. Then just remove this little flat-headed screwdriver plug. Uh, Chad, give it its real name. If this is hard to get out, and they can be sometimes, then give it a light tap on the end to loosen it out. Then using an Allen key, loosen it off and remove the pin.
the brake pads will drop out through the bottom. As with the back brake, make sure there is no dirt or grit in the back of the caliper and that everything is floating freely on the floating pins. Pop the outside pad up and make sure it's clipped into its little retainer. Same thing with the second pad. Again, holding the pads back against the rattle disc, screw them in. Can't say it too many times, not too tight, just nipped up. Put back the retainer, same deal again, just nipped up. Pump the front brakes and you're nearly there. Finally, replace the front disc guard and you're done. Simple as that. Sweet. Remember, any idiot can go fast, but without good brakes, you won't be for long. Hopefully this tip will not only keep your brakes in tip-top nick, but also get you back on the track quicker than ever. The Green Machine has a new team on Elizabeth Street, the new Peter Stevens City Store, with a complete range of Kawasaki road, trail and sports bikes, plus a crew of dedicated Kawasaki staff on hand to help you. Isn't it time you made the trip into Peter Stevens Kawasaki? You know what to do, do it quick. Give them a call or check out the website at www.peterstevens.com.au. And remember, normal people go shopping, bike people go to Peter Stevens. G'day everyone, it's Factory Matt dropping back in for another product review. This week we take a look at the versatile Carrier Caravan Trailer, Australia's leading ultimate sports van. Carrier Caravan Trailers are built Australian tough. All units are professionally engineered and are fully compliant with Australian ADR rules. Once you've got all your luggage on board and your bikes loaded up, the galvanised chassis, electric brakes and 14-inch Dunlop Road Gripper tyres makes getting to even the most difficult spots a breeze. The features of this van are endless. You've got two 60-litre tanks with an electric pump and one-way valve, water level gauge, a hot, hot water system and even an external shower to clean you down after that hard day's riding. The electrics are super safe with one 15-amp inlet a circuit breaker, an external power point and six double internal power points for all your electrical needs. You've got over five and a half cubic metres of storage in full aluminium checker plate, fibreglass lined and sealed. The storage area is very versatile. Once you've taken all your luggage and bikes out, you've got two single fold down beds which turns your storage compartment into a second bedroom. Up front on your drawbar, you've got a checker plate lined storage box which has an interior light automatically switched on by either access door. It even comes with a double 240 volt power point. The main area of the van comes equipped with a very usable kitchen, huge living area and an enormous queen size double bed. It comes with a 12 volt deep cycle battery that's got an auto battery charger. There's also a radio, CD and an MP3 player so that you can play your favourite tunes at any time. The hard work of getting your gear in and out has certainly been taken care of with the motorised rear tailgate which is safe and easy to use. The van comes complete with an enormous rollout awning providing you with a huge shaded area for you to sit back and relax with your family and friends. And you won't even break a sweat with the effortless setup because the Carrier Caravan trailer is fully automated. So if you're looking to get away in style, comfort and luxury, the Carrier Caravan trailer is definitely for you. For more information, check them out at www.carrier.com.au. That's it for another week, but remember, if it comes from Factory Matt, it's got to be good. It's Factory. Yes, Factory Matt Manning at it again. Well, Yakandanda is about 30 minutes south of Wodonga, and recently we headed out there to check out just what was going on at the recent Yakandanda charity bash. The event started three years ago, it was the brainchild of Don McInnes, a local friend of mine who's on the school council, and he came up with the idea to run a charity ride, and I was running online off-road tours at the time, and he came to me and said, Rod, I want to run a charity ride, and I want you to run it. So away we went. Don does the admin, takes all the bookings, and I look after the trails and the riding. It's a single day social trail ride where riders follow arrowed loops out in the bush, some of the best riding you'll find anywhere in Australia. 
and uh, it's all in the name of the charity. All the proceeds go to Yakandanda and Dedarang Primary Schools. We all get to have fun at the same time. It's a win-win situation for everyone. We've got riders from all over Australia. Last year a guy flew down from Darwin to ride the event and uh, about 30% of the riders are local North East riders, but the rest of them come from all over Victoria, Melbourne, Shepparton and Bendigo. The riding is just first class and we're, because it's my backyard, I've got partnerships with local landowners that make it possible to access areas that are normally off limits and it allows us to greatly increase the quality of the ride in many areas. For instance, we're here on private property now in, in the pits, which lends itself beautifully to its purpose. Yeah, it was real good. That was awesome. Bit wet, but uh, very good adventure. That uh, was good fun. Yeah, some of the best uh, flat track you'll probably find coming on a trail ride like that. Yeah, no dust, that's the main thing. Yeah, I don't mind the mud, but I don't like dust. It's going to be real good once I get some more dinosaurs in my guts. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back, that's for sure. Loving it. Oh yeah, I'll be back next year, for sure. Absolutely, with Mr. For The World. We've worked with the DSC in the past, but this year we're, we worked far more closely with the DSC. They helped us in the planning of the event. We actually came out to the bush with them and showed them the tracks we intended to use and, and they gave us permission to use certain tracks. And uh, The DSC have also been actively doing some noise testing here, which, which we welcome. We think it's a great thing. It wasn't from a policing point of view, it was an educational point of view. They're just uh, saying to riders if their bike's a bit noisy, well your bike's a bit noisy perhaps you know, in, in future events you could address that. And we think it's can only benefit the sport in the future. Noisy bikes is a very common complaint and we'd like to eliminate that complaint from people's minds. It's getting bigger and better every year. The level of support we get from volunteers has grown. However, we don't want it to get any bigger. We've reached 150 entries on bikes and we think that's about the limit that the hill can handle without sustaining environmental damage. We think that any more bikes will rip up the tracks too much and we want to be welcome back. It's a beautiful part of the world so to make the event sustainable we think we're going to limit entries to around 150 mark and just continue going the way we, way we are. We think that we've got the backup support and the help, volunteers, sufficient to run it well at 150 any more. It could become a nightmare and just too difficult. So we're not greedy. Thanks to Rod and the guys there. That's it for this week, Lee. Time to go, mate. Yes, it is. I tell you what, it's been a great show. It certainly has. It's been huge. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next week. But until then, ride safe. MX TV was proudly brought to you by Peter Stevens Motorcycles, QBE Insurance, Motorcycle Insurance Specialists, Fox, and Honda, the power of dreams.